Today we make all our strings in uh, Navajoa, in Sonora, in Mexico. And this year, this month this year, is the 25th anniversary of our relationship with our valued co-workers in Navajoa. And not only do they make the strings, they started out uh, making the backpacker, and then of course later uh, the high pressure laminate guitars, the X-Series, and currently not only are we making the backpacker and the X-Series, but we're now, after 25 years, making solid wood guitars down there. So, relationship I'm really proud of. Um, they are as dedicated to the quality ethic that we have here in Nazareth as we are, and it's a fantastic partnership. So my dad retires. My grandfather uh, briefly came back, ran the business. I'm out of college, um, and then my grandfather passes away. And so I get promoted to chairman and CEO, and I was scared to death. Honestly, I just didn't, I, I, I was just scared. Um, I never was, I wasn't a born leader. I wasn't one of those kids that was the president of the senior class. But now I was put into a leadership role. I had gone to college. I got a degree in business, which was helpful. And I went on Outward Bound. I went by myself. I went to professional development. And it, it gave me a foundation in terms of confidence and team building. And this is a point in business where companies are beginning to understand the dynamics of teamwork in, in an organization. And some of which, some of that we learned during the Japanese reconstruction because we taught them how to do it. We taught them about continuous improvement. We taught them about the elimination of waste. Uh, prior to this, our organization was pretty hierarchical, particularly out in the factory. Um, so I came back from Outward Bound. I'm all wound up. And uh, one of the things I've done is I've continued to go on Outward Bound trips with my colleagues. Um, every year I go out with uh, 10 or 11, 12 of them. We go out for a week. We do some experiential learning. Um, out in the wilderness, or sometimes we do it in an urban environment, which is pretty hilarious to see a bunch of people walking around downtown Philly with backpacks. And uh, they get to know me, I get to know them, we get to work on team dynamics and also leadership skills. I'm a big proponent of Outward Bound, and uh, we would highly recommend it to anyone. So I came into this job, and I said, okay, what can I do? What can I influence? I, I can't really influence the demand. I certainly can't influence the political situation, the fact that inflation is rampant. But the quality of the Martin guitar had slipped just, just a little bit. It wasn't a conscious decision on anyone's part. It was actually we were distracted. We were distracted by the acquisitions that weren't working. We were distracted by the fact that the demand for the product was falling off a cliff. It was stuff that most people couldn't see. But those of us that knew, knew that that had to be corrected. And so the first thing I said to my colleagues was, look, you know, if it's 3,000 guitars, let's make 3,000 of the best guitars this company has ever made. And that resonated with my colleagues who were building guitars. They said, yeah, that's what we want to do. And then I said, okay, we're going to make a better guitar. In fact, tomorrow we're going to make a better guitar than we did today. And someday, someday we're going to make the perfect guitar. And we are closer than we've ever been to doing that. And then MTV Unplugged. And I would love to tell you it was all my idea, but what I will tell you is that we saw opportunity there and we became partners with MTV. The irony, of course, is that oftentimes they were plugged in. It was just pretty subtle. And the plugging in has come a long way. You know, there was a time when acoustic electric guitars made a sound that was an embarrassment to the acoustic guitar by itself, or an embarrassment to an acoustic guitar played through a good microphone. The disadvantage, of course, of a microphone is you're constrained and there's the potential for feedback. So folks who are much smarter than I'll ever be, um, and particularly including uh, my friend Larry Fishman, said there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way to create the sound of an acoustic guitar authentically and loudly. And we've been on that journey now, really since the late 1950s. And again, it, it, like, like the perfect guitar, we are closer than ever to making the perfect acoustic electric guitar. And it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, it's no longer an embarrassment to plug in a good guitar with good electronics through a good PA system. In fact, it's a, it's a pretty cool sound. So this display shows some of the products that we embraced as business began to pick up. We were getting a little more excited, a little more confident, 
having a little more fun, started to do some fun stuff uh, with some inlay artists, actually found a demand for $50,000 guitars, uh, amazingly enough. So the, the business got turned around and uh, we're still busy. We're busier than we've ever been. My big challenge and concern now is that my family and everybody who makes and sells fine acoustic guitars has done a wonderful job of convincing the customer that fine acoustic guitars should be made from rare exotic hardwoods, particularly rosewood, mahogany, ebony, and spruce. Well, there's a reason they're called rare and exotic, because they are rare and exotic. And finally now, after too much denial, we have come to the realization that sustainable forestry is the way forward. Lacey Act has helped us in terms of reminding us all that this earth is a finite resource. I'm a big proponent of alternative materials. Yes, I run the oldest and possibly most traditional guitar company in the world, but I'm not above saying, you know what? Maybe aluminum would work. And in fact, we actually have a patent on the use of aluminum on the top of acoustic guitars. So the big challenge for me, and hopefully by the time Claire is my age, if she chooses to join the business, she will be harvesting some of the trees that are going to be growing now. Because that's how long it takes. It takes many, many years to get those saplings to a point that they're harvestable and big enough to make a fine acoustic guitar out of them. And in the meantime, we all have to be sensitive to the fact that these materials are getting scarcer. Yes, they work great. There's also other uses for them. I still think the highest and best use for them is a Martin guitar, but I'm probably biased. I hope you get the chance to come and visit, see this museum for, its, for yourself. We'd love to show you around the factory. Thanks for listening. <laughs>